Welcome to Proclaiming Justice, a podcast from PJTN that focuses the light of truth on vital issues in today's headlines that impact every American. I'm your host, Laurie Cardoza Moore, founder and president of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, and I'm here to educate, motivate, and activate you to action. I want to arm you with the truth and the facts you'll need to fight and preserve our constitutional republic and uphold the Judeo-Christian values our nation was founded upon. Is a war inevitable between Israel and the terrorist regime of Iran? When it comes, will America back their most important ally in the Middle East? In a world turned upside down, Israel becomes increasingly ostracized, while Iran, a nation that has made no secret of wishing Israel's destruction, pursues nuclear weapons loudly, proudly, and without fear of rebuke. According to one infamous European poll a few years back, Europeans listed Israel ahead of Iran and North Korea as the greatest threat to world peace. On our show today, we'll examine the greatest threat to Israel's survival. Hello, and welcome to this edition of Focus on Israel. I'm Laurie Cardoza Moore, president and founder of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, a nonprofit organization dedicated to educating and sharing the message of Christian biblical responsibility to the people and land of Israel against the rise of a new anti-Semitism. On each program, I urge you to contact our leaders in Washington. Today, I'm going to make it abundantly clear how important this is to do now, not tomorrow, today. Iran must not have the means or the ability to build a nuclear weapon. This is not a point of negotiation. When the regime reaches that tipping point, the game is over, and the reality of a nuclear arms race in the Middle East and a possible Armageddon will arise. Many Christians stood by during the Nazis' Jewish Holocaust. We must not stand by again as Iran plans to launch another Holocaust. We must not fool ourselves. Evil exists, no matter how much we want to deny it, no matter how much we want to look away or bury our heads in the sand. It stands against us. The spirit of evil has possessed many madmen who cite their cause as reason to perform horrific acts upon fellow men. Under the guise of eugenics and the elimination of an inferior race for the greater good, Hitler killed millions of Jews and others deemed unfit. Today, evil is personified in the Iranian regime. They refer to Israel as the little Satan and America as the great Satan. To Muslims, the term Satan refers to groups rather than a specific individual. Christians know that as a single entity, a fallen angel, Lucifer, is Satan. Within Islam, Satan refers to groups of people or countries, not an individual. Hence, the Satan labels given to Israel and the United States. Iran's potential weapons are even more horrific than Hitler's gas chambers in that they are capable of killing millions in minutes. His goal in doing this is to hail the Shiite Muslims Messiah, the 12th Imam. According to Islamic belief, an Imam is an anointed leader or ruler. Moreover, among the Islamic Shia, an Imam is believed to be a prayer leader or cleric who is anointed by the Islamic prophet Muhammad and able to lead mankind in every way. The 12th Imam, according to some Shia Muslims, is a great spiritual savior. This savior has a name, Muhammad al-Mahdi. Mahdi was born around 868 AD at a time of large persecutions of Shiite Muslims. In order to protect him, his father, the 11th Imam, sent him into hiding. Mahdi appeared briefly in public as a child, but when his father died, he went back into the shadows. Even today, Shiites believe he continues to guide Muslims. Mahdi's followers are often called Twelvers. Some devout Shiite Muslims believe him to be a direct descendant of the Prophet Muhammad. Iran's leadership 
are deeply committed Shiite Muslims and speak openly about praying for the return of the Mahdi, his savior, but not in a way Christians speak about their Jesus returning to earth. They believe that the 12th Imam is coming soon and that he is the chosen one, chosen by Allah himself to hasten Mahdi's return, which wherein is where the problem lies. Iran scientists are working around the clock to develop nuclear weapons. This fanatical Muslim regime hates all non-Muslims, especially Christians and Jews. Iran's supreme leader, the Grand Ayatollah, Saeed Ali Khamenei, believes he has been told by the Prophet Muhammad that he is the chosen one to hasten the return of the Muslim's Messiah by creating chaos throughout the world. Combine all of this with a world full of countries, except for Israel, who are unable or unwilling to stop this madman, and we have a very deadly situation. Even with the overwhelming evidence and Iran's own horrendous statements, many world leaders still dismiss him as some lunatic in a third world country. Unfortunately, nothing could be further from the truth. Should Hitler, Mao, or Joseph Stalin have been taken more seriously before they murdered tens of millions of people? Yes. Should Iran be treated seriously? Absolutely. And Bible prophecy holds the key. Let's compare and contrast what the Bible says about end time prophecy with what the Twelvers believe about the coming of the Twelfth Imam remembering that Satan always tries to duplicate what God does. In Matthew, we're told that Jesus will come after his followers spread his good news throughout the world. For Islam, the Mahdi will return when his followers create chaos and death in the world. The Antichrist will appear as the seven years of tribulation begins amid horrendous world chaos. The Mahdi's appearance will supposedly be preceded by a number of prophetic events during three years of horrendous world chaos, tyranny, and oppression. The Antichrist will move his seat of power from the EU to Jerusalem, where multitudes will pledge allegiance to him. The Mahdi will move his seat of power from Medina to Mecca, where thousands will pledge allegiance to him. The Antichrist will force people to worship him or be beheaded. Mahdi will supposedly force people to convert to Islam or be beheaded. The Antichrist will be given control of the earth during the seven years of tribulation. Mahdi will rule over the Arabs and world for seven years. The Antichrist will set up a one world religion and government. Mahdi will set up a one world religion and government. The Antichrist will come in peace, but will eradicate all that oppose him and demand people worship him. Mahdi will supposedly exterminate all tyranny and oppression, bringing harmony and total peace. The Antichrist will proclaim himself as God in the Jewish temple with the false prophet at his side. Mahdi will supposedly lead a prayer in Mecca in which Jesus will be at his side as his lieutenant. When compared side by side, the picture becomes clear. Beyond any doubt, the Twelfth Imam is Christianity's Antichrist. The Twelver's evil is our good. Their good is our evil. Both Christianity and Islam have a very well-defined period of final days. Both of them cannot be correct. Ayatollah Khamenei's enemies are clear, Jews and Christians. Iran's radical Muslim theology instructs him that in order to bring about the return of the Mahdi, the believers must initiate and spread as much death and destruction throughout the world as humanly possible. Iran's supreme leaders believe they have been chosen by Muhammad to do this. In the misguided quest to execute Muhammad's desires to pave the way for the 12th Imam, Iran is actually fulfilling a portion of Christianity's end time prophecy by bringing their armies against Israel. It is said that actions speak louder than words. And in the case of Iran and its tyrannical leaders, both actions 
and words speak loudly and dangerously. This month marks the 70th anniversary of the historic declaration of the State of Israel. God's sovereign hand can be seen all over this land. Included in the celebrations is the opening of the American Embassy right here in Jerusalem. In honor of this celebration, PJTN is offering a special 70th anniversary package, which includes a captivating new book and an award-winning DVD. Israel Rising is a unique visual story of Israel's miraculous journey from unforgiving desert to thriving nation. Thousands of years ago, the prophet Ezekiel foretold a future time in which the arid land of Israel would come alive for its people. Now this breathtaking book documents the fulfillment of this vision as rarely seen photographs from the 1880s to the 1940s are juxtaposed with recent photos of the same locations. This book will inspire and captivate you as it illuminates Israel's foretold awakening in a new and unforgettable way. In addition, you'll receive the award-winning documentary, Israel Indivisible, The Case for the Ancient Homeland. This inspiring film examines the many political twists and turns that make Israel the world's most controversial nation. From Abraham and the Promise to the issues facing the Jewish state today, the film examines the historical, archaeological, legal, and biblical foundations for the modern state of Israel. This is a limited time offer for these two remarkable resources for just a one-time gift of $70 today. Your generous donation will help ensure that PJTN stays on the front lines and in the headlines of all the important issues facing Israel and our Jewish brethren. So please go to PJTN.org today. From studying history, it's very clear that what starts with the Jews never ends only with the Jews we must strongly stand against any anti-Semitic trends. For if not stopped, they'll cause harm to all of us, and we'll witness the downfall of our Judeo-Christian Western culture. Today, many people say there's no longer a need for a Jewish state, that Jews around the world no longer need a place of refuge. But anyone who has heard recent statistics about the worldwide rise in anti-Semitism would never make such a claim. The reality is that neo-Nazi groups and Nazi sympathizers are increasing around the world. Surveys show that over one billion people in the world harbor anti-Semitic attitudes. Close to 50% believe that Jews have too much power in the business world, and two-thirds of the world's population has never heard of the Holocaust, or believe the historic accounts of it are inaccurate. Don't let yourself be manipulated by evil people with a wicked agenda. When the self-serving villains are in control, good people from all religions suffer. Muslims, Christians, and all people of conscience should stand proudly and show respect for a country that gives so much to the world in so many ways. Do your part, do your research, and do what you can to make a difference because what happens in Israel does affect us all. This is not just a Jewish or just an Israeli problem. This is a problem for all humanity, for each and every one of us who believe in freedom and human rights. Learn more about what you can do at pjtn.org. Putin's Russia has become a major sponsor of Middle East terror regimes and Iran. Our next clip from the disinformation documentary exposes this dangerous alliance. Soon after President Putin and his ex-KGB officers began running Russia, they moved their country back into the encampment of the Soviet Union's traditional clients, which had been the deadliest enemies of the United States. Putin started out favoring precisely the three governments labeled by the US as an axis of evil, Iran, Iraq, and North Korea. With deadly secrecy, the Kremlin began arming the anti-American Arab terrorists, just as they had done in Andropov's day. On July 12, 2006, militants of Hezbollah, armed by Putin's Russia, launched a powerful rocket attack against Israel. Most of the Hezbollah weapons cases captured by the Israeli military forces during that offensive were marked Customer, Ministry of Defense of Syria, Supplier, KBP, Tula, Russia. Hezbollah has also been recently armed with the Russian-designed FAR-5 rockets, Zelzal-1 rockets, Scud missiles, as well as Russian anti-tank missiles. 
Putin also quietly reinstituted sales of weapons to Iran and engaged Russia in the construction of a 1,000 megawatt nuclear reactor at Boucher. The uranium conversion facility is capable of producing fissile material for nuclear weapons. Hundreds of Russian technicians also started helping the government of Iran to develop the Shahab missile system, which can carry a nuclear or germ warhead to anywhere in the Middle East and Europe. Russia sees uh, uh, helping Iran and working with Iran, and it did with Syria as well, uh, uh, as a, a, a very good way uh, to uh, undermine American influence in the Middle East. Uh, clearly, uh, Iran is one of Mr. Putin's greatest allies. They're a great trading partner with him. He's building, has built their nuclear power plants and probably has supplied them with a lot of other technology. We have to look realistically at the potential of a nuclear-armed Iran as being a huge threat, not only to America, but to global stability. Iran's current president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad had already announced that nothing could stop his country from building nuclear weapons, and he stated that Israel was a disgraceful stain on the Islamic world that would be eliminated. During World War II, thousands of Americans died to eradicate Nazism and its anti-Semitic terrorism. Now we're facing Islamofascism and nuclear anti-Semitic terrorism. The parallels between Nazi Germany's military buildup in the late 30s and the military buildup today in Iran are evident and scary. Each day brings a new revelation and the dangerous chess game the world is playing with Iran seems to have no end. But at some point, the decision must be made and the action of a military strike by Israel alone or in concert with America is inevitable. As this show is airing, that strike may have already occurred or even be in the process. We know that the Iranian people do not desire this war, but unfortunately, many will be caught up in it and be hurt and killed. Although the leadership of Iran considers America an enemy, the word on the street is that the majority of the Iranian people are friendly toward the U.S. Attempts within the country to overthrow the iron hand that rules them have been brutally quelled. We must pray for the people of Iran and pray that somehow the evil that rules them can be taken down before the world must disarm them in a war that can have a far-reaching impact. I recently had the opportunity to speak with Itamar Marcus, president of the Israel-based Palestinian Media Watch. Itamar has worked tirelessly over the years exposing the propaganda being promoted by the Palestinians and other Islamic groups. One of the things that um, makes Israelis very, very, uh, I would say, happy uh, is that we know that the American people feel close to Israel uh, and Israelis feel close to the American people. Uh, and that's something, and we know that the, the, the population, the people of the United States do support Israel and, and really want their leadership to support Israel. Uh, we need strong international leadership by the United States in dealing with a threat to all of humanity. The world agrees. Iran plus an atomic bomb equals bad news. Must be stopped. Why? Iran is the biggest exporter of terror in the world, spreading instability and death. Iranian missiles threaten the Western world, including Madrid, Rome, and Paris. And they're developing new ones, which can reach the United States. Under the deal being proposed, Iran will halt its race towards an atomic bomb in return for the lifting of the sanctions, which have been slowing it down. However, Iran's ability to make a bomb will remain intact. Now this is a big problem. Let's do a little bit of math to understand why. It takes between 2,500 and 3,000 centrifuges operating for a full year to enrich enough uranium for one nuclear bomb. Iran has a total of 19,000 centrifuges, which, if operated together, can produce a bomb within six to seven weeks. Iran's plan is to reach a deal which relieves the sanctions without giving up the machines. Then, at the right opportunity, it will dash towards a bomb before the world has a chance to say boo. After all, this plan worked for its best buddy, North Korea. The difference between a good deal and a bad deal 
is one that includes dismantling the machines. This would give the world three years to know if Iran is building a bomb, to form a global coalition, and to take action. Six weeks are simply not enough. Iran with a bomb is a global threat and will turn the Middle East into a nuclear nightmare. We need to do everything we can to stop it. The recent speech by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu at the United Nations was by all accounts a brilliant and impassioned call for the world to stand against Iran's nuclear ambitions. He made it clear that the time for negotiations may well be over and that a nuclear Iran would essentially be a nuclear armed Al Qaeda. For 35 years, Iran has relentlessly pursued the global mission which was set forth by its founding ruler, Ayatollah Khomeini, in these words. We will export our revolution to the entire world until the cry, there is no God but Allah, will echo throughout the world over. And ever since, the regime's brutal enforcers, Iran's revolutionary guards, have done exactly that. Listen to its uh, current commander, General Muhammad Ali Jafri. And he clearly stated this goal. He said, our imam did not limit the Islamic revolution to this country. Our duty is to prepare the way for an Islamic world government. Now, some argue that Iran's global terror campaign, its subversion of countries throughout the Middle East and, and well beyond the Middle East, some argue that this is the work of the extremists. They say things are changing. Really? So let's look at uh, what Foreign Minister Zarif wrote in his book just a few years ago. We have a fundamental problem with the West, and especially with America. This is because we are heirs to a global mission, which is tied to our raison d'etre a global mission which is tied to our very reason for being. So don't be fooled by Iran's manipulative charm offensive. It's designed for one purpose and for one purpose only, to lift the sanctions and remove the obstacles to Iran's path to the bomb. This would effectively cement Iran's place as a threshold military nuclear power. And in the future, at the time of its choosing, Iran, the world's most dangerous regime in the world's most dangerous region, would obtain the world's most dangerous weapons. Allowing that to happen would pose the gravest threat to us all. It's one thing to confront militant Islamists on pickup trucks armed with Kalashnikov rifles. It's another thing to confront militant Islamists armed with weapons of mass destruction. Now imagine how much more dangerous the Islamic State of Iran would be if it possessed nuclear weapons. Ladies and gentlemen, would you let ISIS enrich uranium? Would you let ISIS build a heavy water reactor? Would you let ISIS develop intercontinental ballistic missiles? Of course you wouldn't. Then you mustn't let the Islamic State of Iran do those things either. Because here's what will happen. Once Iran produces atomic bombs, all the charms and all the smiles will suddenly disappear. They'll just vanish. And it's then that the Ayatollahs will show their true face and unleash their aggressive fanaticism on the entire world. There's only one responsible course of action to address this threat. Iran's nuclear military capabilities 
must be fully dismantled. Make no mistake, ISIS must be defeated. But to defeat ISIS and leave Iran as a threshold nuclear power is to win the battle and lose the war. Together, we must recognize the global threat of militant Islam, the primacy of dismantling Iran's nuclear weapons capability, and the indispensable role of Arab states in advancing peace with the Palestinians. Isaiah, our great prophet of peace, taught us nearly 3,000 years ago in Jerusalem to speak truth to power. For the sake of Zion, I will not be silent. For the sake of Jerusalem, I will not be still. Until her justice shines bright and her salvation glows like a flaming torch. Ladies and gentlemen, let us light a torch of truth and justice to safeguard our common future. Thank you. That's our show for today, and I hope I've made it abundantly clear how important it is that you contact your senators, congressmen, the White House. Let your elected leaders hear from you. Not tomorrow, today. The Iranian regime sees America as being weak as our administration bends over backwards in appeasement and delay. The time to stand up is now. You should also get involved and support pro-Israel organizations such as PJTN. Visit our website to learn more. Sign up to receive free newsletters, action alerts, daily blogs, and order our films to share with others. God bless you, and thank you for all you do on behalf of our Jewish brethren and all Israel. Please join us next week as we focus on Israel. To support this program, send your tax-deductible gift to Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, P.O. Box 682711, Franklin, Tennessee, 37068. You can also support PJTN online. Visit PJTN.org or call 1-877-873-9020. Anti-Semitism has reached epic proportions, and Israel is now surrounded by nations who seek its destruction. For Israel to lose just one battle would mean losing everything. As Christians, it is our biblical responsibility to stand with our Jewish brethren and Israel. PJTN needs your help to reach more Christians with this urgent message. Please visit our website to become a member today and order our award-winning documentaries. You must decide that you won't be silent. Sign up now at PJTN.org. God bless you and thank you for your support and prayers. Thank you again for joining me on this edition of Proclaiming Justice. Please share this podcast with your family and friends. For more information about how you can get involved, please visit our website at pjtn.org. As a PJTN watchman, you can help us keep up the fight to preserve our freedom for our children and their children for such a time as this.